welcome back to Between Two Wings. I'm your host, Emily Norman. And today we have Melvin Williams with us, kind of known more so on social media as Mel the Traveler. He is a maintenance instructor at Delta for the 737NG. He's also a flight instructor, and he's one of the most fun aerobatic pilots to watch and follow along with on social media. So Mel, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Ah, no problem. Happy to be here. How's it going? Of course. Very good. Literally so excited to talk to you. Like you just make it aviation look so much fun from your eating donut videos while doing, you know, loops and barrel rolls to showing aerobags off to people who've never been, you know, in that hot seat before and getting their reactions. It's, it's so entertaining. It's really inspiring as well. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I try to make it fun. Um, yeah, I try to make it fun, right? Because if I'm not having fun, then what the hell am I doing? So Exactly. So um, we like to start off by kind of explaining our backgrounds a bit. So tell us a little bit about that. This one? Oh, <laughs> exactly. Man. Uh, it's nothing. You know, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just the background. Photoshop, right? Cool. Yeah, exactly. It's Photoshop. I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> I have no idea who that guy is. Um, but no, uh, this is uh, my flight with the uh, Thunderbirds. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, just a Thunderbird flight. You know, just, there you go. Yeah, we'll definitely have to get into that a little bit later. But, yeah. you know, rewinding way back to before you were in the hot seat with the Thunderbirds, you actually had a really cool kind of jump into aviation by attending an aviation high school. What led to that and what was that experience like? Uh, I originally, so I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and um, I wanted to play basketball. I was pretty good at basketball growing up, and I, well, all I wanted to do was basketball. Well, I wasn't really a fan of school. Uh, go <laughs> figure, right? Yeah. I wasn't a fan of school, so my grades took a hit. So um, uh, when it was time to go to high school, I was, you know, currently kind of toying with semi being recruited to a, a a popular high school for basketball in, in Brooklyn, New York. And my mom wasn't having it. She's like, nope, you didn't do what you're supposed to do in school. So that's out. Uh, you have to <laughs> you, you have to make another des- uh, another decision. So I ended up uh, fishing through this book that we have in, in New York, like this thick high school book with all the high schools and all, and all the five boroughs. So flipping through the pages, I came across aviation high school. I was like, well, you know, I kind of like airplanes. Well, you know, let me, let me see what this is about. Um, I thought it was a school to go to become a pilot. Long behold, it was a school to go to become a mechanic. <laughs> I get there and I'm like, no, no, that's not what I was thinking. Um, and it was like orientation day. It was the first time I'd gone. But anyway, it worked out um, because it's still, you know, I was still surrounded by aviation, which I had a love for anyway. So, so it's a vocational school in Queens, New York, and I graduated there um, with my AMP certificate at uh, 18 years old. And um, Delta hired me at 19. And that's where the uh, journey began. It's incredible. You're 19, you're getting hired by Delta. Um, I know day one, they don't just send you out there and say, you know, fix some engines. You are an interior technician. What was that like? Maybe um, glamorous, not so glamorous. Uh, you know, it was kind of surreal because I don't know, like I felt like not to not to say that my high school was fake or anything. It's obviously not. But, you know, it's almost like a dream come true or, or, mm-hmm. or too good to be true, I should rather say, because uh, when I was finally out there, I'm like, wow, like I went to school, got two licenses and I'm I'm here. You know what I mean? So it was kind of like a, a shock because I'm not in the classroom anymore. I'm actually out working live, you know, airplanes. And I you know, started out in the cabin. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just kind of surreal. Uh, it took a while to sink in. It was great. I'm 19 years old, traveling the world for free, um, mm-hmm. just show up to the airport and they say, yeah, you got a seat. And I'm like, cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that was it. And I was gone, you know? Yeah. So what were some of the, the things that, you know, notorious that you had to fix all the time, or maybe a pest that you had to, to fix when it came to interior things, just things that we probably don't think of as passengers um, or even pilots up front. Um, oh man, uh, overhead bins that, you know, mm-hmm. some, you know, some of you, you know, passengers might have a tendency to slam or whatever. And just, oh, I'm just trying to get my bag out and, you know, yeah. dump the bag in and kind of, you know, um, so plenty of those, uh, uh, tray tables, uh, the, uh, the latches sometimes, you know, people a little harsh on those. So we have to replace those at times, uh, carpets, people spill things on carpets. We have to place uh, carpet segments, uh, 
first class seats, believe it or not. Um, mm-hmm. you know, people pay a lot of money for those seats. They got to be working. The worst thing you can yeah. do is tell, tell, tell somebody who paid, you know, X amount of dollars, thousands of dollars, depending on, you know, where that airplane was going. Hey, yeah, sorry, your seat is, you know, not working. We can't have you sit there. Uh, that's t- like terrible news. So uh, that's like the priority uh, usually is to get those first class seats working. Yeah, definitely. And so when you were, you know, in there working on overhead bins and tray tables, did you imagine yourself moving forward to the cockpit one day or how did the passion to become a pilot come back into play? Um, Oh, that's a, that's another story. Um, so at the time I was kind of, you know, I mean, flying was still in the back of my mind, but like way, way, <laughs> way in the back of my mind. Uh, as far as I was concerned at that point, my ship had sailed as far as being a pilot. Um, I was making good money as a technician. I was like, cool, this is where I'm at. This is where it's at. So this is where mm-hmm. I'm going to stay. Um, so the pilot thing actually came about um, fast forward, like really fast forward from 2007 when I got hired uh, up at JFK to uh, down here in Atlanta. Uh, it was about 2000, had to be 2016. Um, I walked into a MD-88 cockpit and uh, there was a, <laughs> a pilot by the name of Dave Buck Uh, Dave and I are good friends now. And I walked in, I said, excuse me, sir. I heard you call maintenance or whatever the case is. How can I help? He turns around and goes, wow, you're a young looking guy. You ever thought about flying? Just like that. Never met this guy. (laughs) Um, And I said, looked at him as like, "Eh, yeah, no, uh, you know, that ship was kind of sailed. No. And he was like, nah, man, you know, a lot of us are going to be retiring soon. And, you know, there's going to be a huge hiring surge. You need to be a part of that, you know, jump on board. If you're ever thinking about it, you know, just do it. Uh, yeah, whatever. So I kind of blew him off, fixed this problem and you know, off he went. And uh, it was almost like it was too, uh, you know, like it was meant to happen because mm-hmm. I saw Dave maybe about a week later and I walked into the flight deck and there he is. And I'm like, no way, you know, here's this guy again. <laughs> I'm like, I already know what he's going to say. Oh, man, you started flying yet. And you know, he said that jokingly and I'm like, no, nope, not yet. You know, let me get whatever problem you got. So you can get the hell on, you know, <laughs> and then, uh, and then it might have been maybe it was a little bit longer this time, maybe about a month later. Um, I got a call for another gate and uh, walk out there with him. And I'm like, you know what? Let me take this guy up on this. You know, this is obviously, you know, a sign maybe. So I said, you know what? Yeah. Help me out. You know, I want to do like an intro flight or something like that. He's like, yeah, oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah, I got you, man. Okay, awesome. So we exchanged numbers and um, he said he's going to put out a couple of feelers on Facebook. And he did. Um, and he gave me a call maybe two days later and said, hey, I got somebody who's willing to take you up. You know, what do you think? And I said, yeah, sure. So I met the uh, the gentleman who took me up, ended up being my flight instructor, Glenn Fink, um, who's also a Delta uh, captain. And um, we went up in a Cessna 182. That was my first flight. And uh, when he landed, well, when we landed, pulled the airplane in the hang, he said, so what do you want to do? And I said, I want to fly, you know, and the rest <laughs> was his. Um, and it was literally that's that that that's how I got up there uh, because of Dave Buck. Um, I probably wouldn't be flying right now. That's that's the God honest truth. Yeah, that's an, that's an incredible story. And that's a really good connection that you and Dave are going to have, you know, for the rest of your lives, essentially. And yeah. then he got to stop making up excuses to call maintenance to pursue like to make you fly exactly. <laughs> so it's a win-win right, right. exactly <laughs> and so I know now you are a maintenance instructor at Delta uh what does that look like uh it's the best job in the world um and uh I'm you know it sounds cliche but it's the truth I'm enthusiastic with my words I like to have fun and I can't believe they pay me to stand in front stand in front of a group of people and I get to talk it's great it's like, it's like the best thing ever. Like what? You're going to pay me to go have fun in front of a classroom and teach at the same time. It's like, you know, you can't beat it. Yeah. And I can imagine that your students really enjoy your enthusiasm and probably learn really well from you that way. Don't you? Aren't I so like enthusiastic? I mean, yeah, of course we have a lot of fun. You know, we have a lot of fun in class, a lot of jokes, a lot of laughs. You know, I kind of bring the mood down where everybody's like relaxed and nobody's kind of like, you know, uptight and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, um, and yeah, we just go in there and I just talk about the airplane and they receive it well because we're having fun. So. Yeah, I actually watched a little snippet you posted um, in the classroom. I think it was the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it seems like something I wanted to learn more about. Um, yeah, and kind exactly. of on, there you go. on that aspect, so that, you know, a little bit. Say you started flying the 737 one day. 
Yes. How much of an advantage do you think you would have going from, you know, having this background and knowledge ahead of time from the maintenance perspective to you know, actually being the one uh, who's flying? Well, it's kind of different, right? So, um, you know, a pilot's job is to fly, right? Mm-hmm. A mechanic's job is to fix. Um, you don't want a pilot fixing while he's flying, right? <laughs> so, so you have to have a head start on some systems and stuff like that, because, you know, if I did become a 737 pilot one day, I'd have to learn the systems that I kind of already know, uh, mm-hmm. probably more in detail from an, from an operational standpoint. Um, so I think the two worlds are different because like if I'm in the airplane and there's some type of, of issue, I'm not going to be sitting there trying to troubleshoot. I, my, my job first is to fly that airplane, you know, and then uh, give it to the mechanic whenever I get in. Right. Um, so I don't think the two worlds would clash per se. I don't think I'll be up there like, oh, I, I think I know what the problem is. Maybe. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, at that point, my job is to is to fly. Yeah. Don't and, think that's in the checklist. <laughs> right. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it'll be cool because like I said, I'd have a head start, but, um, as far as, you know, the two worlds clashing, they got to be separate. For sure. Um, but then when you are on the ground and, you know, say it's when you're in the classroom trying to teach or when you were, um, you know, actually working on maintenance and interacting with pilots a little bit more, did you have any kind of not really advantage, but was it just, you know, easier to, approach these situations because you did have some of that extra knowledge on the pilot side? Uh, yeah. Um, because, you know, we, at that point, you know, speak the same lingo. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they may say something I'm like, Oh yeah. Kind of, yeah. I, yeah. I have an idea what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. So in that aspect, it does help me attack whatever problem that they have because I kind of have, you know, uh, uh, the pilot's perspective on it. So that, on the other side, for me, helping them out, it does help drastically. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Okay, so we have to circle back to what you've got behind you. You're uh-huh. in the seat with the Thunderbirds. You know, that's an amazing opportunity that you were given, and I think it was rightfully so given to you. You promote it really well across your channels. Um, it's a very humbling experience, it seems, as well, especially if you go back and watch some of those videos that you posted. Um, but yeah, what was kind of Air Force Thunderbird training camp like for a day? Uh, it was uh, surreal. Um, it's like living a dream. Um, you know, I'd always been a fan of the, uh, the team. Um, you know, I'd posted a picture of me as a kid when my mom took mm-hmm. me. Um, you know, I forget how old I was. I think I was like 12 or yeah I think might have been 12 I think it was right before high school so probably 12 years old or so and uh, we were out there in Vegas and you know she took me to the uh, Thunderbird facility and uh, yeah it was just a crazy experience Um, you know I was again always in the aviation and I was like the pinnacle like these jets they make a lot of noise they look cool you know cool paint jobs and stuff like that people have their name and numbers you know I thought it was you know really dope um, so now to come full circle and actually be a part of it, um, it didn't feel real until I started the takeoff role. Then I was like, oh, crap, you know, <laughs> not even when not even when the canopy closed, when the canopy closed, I was like, oh, OK, cool. You know, uh, waving everybody and stuff. And then, you know, it wasn't until I felt that thing moving. And I was like, wow, OK, this is actually happening now. So mm-hmm. it was uh, it was cool. You know, um, you get there, uh, you meet up with the doc, um, you know, he kind of does a little medical background, make sure you're good, teaches you how to breathe, uh, how to, you know, put up with the G's. And, um, and then um, you throw on the flight suit, you know, you get fitted for your G suit, which wraps around your legs and inflates and stuff like that plugs into the airplane, um, your helmet, um, you know, throw on the boots and all that. And then uh, you get briefed by uh, the, uh, the pilot, shout out the flak. What's up flak? Um, uh, number eight. Um, and uh, yeah, he took me up. So he briefed me, showed me the practice area, what we're going to do and so on and so forth. And um, had to get like uh, egress, emergency, emergency training. Um, um, you know, what happens if you have to eject and the parachute, how to operate and what you had to. It was a lot um, for sure. Um, and then uh, we go out to the jet and take a couple of pictures and all that good stuff and then get strapped in. Um, so it was uh, it was quite the experience. 
Um, yeah. And I know you guys got up to actually pulling nine G's. Um, and I've seen the video and if, if you're watching this and haven't seen the video, I highly suggest you do because, uh, it's entertaining. It's, <laughs> it's great. It's the, the pilot just seems so calm and you are, you know, doing way better than I probably would in that situation. I was freaking um, out. Yeah. <laughs> but, I well, I mean, you do air bag flying, but that is, you know, totally next level. Yeah. Um, you know, what were some of the things that you learned from that experience that you kind of took with you on your airbag, um, you know, training and endeavors that you're doing now? Um, breathe. Uh, you know, I don't have to squeeze as hard, you know, like I'm in a F-16 or something like that because I'm not pulling <laughs> yeah, that many the Jesus, right? on F-16, a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, of course, they're very similar. You know, I mean, I think at one point a decathlon beat a F-16 in a dogfight, yeah. but don't tell nobody, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah uh i think i breathe a little bit better I, i'm just more conscious of it now when i'm in my airplane um even though you know it goes up to six g's positive uh negative five um you know i feel like i wasn't breathing as much as i should be um before and i'm not doing the whole strain and all that you know but but i am i am breathing a little bit different and i think it does help me out um in the airplane just conserve some energy and you know so because when I was in breathe oil, at least I thought I was doing what I, yeah, anyway, but mm -hmm. um, I'd end up like more tired after a session. Um, so when I started breathing a little bit better, um, I'd still be tired, but not as much. So I know that, you know, whatever I was doing, you know, had, a, had some type of effect. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you kind of learn getting the inside lesson from the pros there um, to kind of take with you. So that's, that's definitely yeah. incredible. And exactly. what are you, what are you doing in your aerobatic adventures? I know that's more or less kind of a newer thing that you're doing. So I actually started competing already. Um, so I have, I have two competitions under my belt so far. Um, I'm currently rebuilding my decathlon. Mm -hmm. So like I tore it all the way down to the bones um, and I'm rebuilding it, new hardware, new wings, overhauled engine, new avionics, new interior, like the whole, the whole, the whole nine. And um, the goal is to continue to compete, get better, um, learn a lot. Um, I have some, some new mentors that, you know, are helping me out, trying to help me navigate through the space. Um, and then when I get good enough, when that time comes, I'd like to you know, get out there and potentially do some air shows and kind of see what that that world is like. Uh, take a couple of bookings and yeah, just go from there and continue to grow and, you know, increase my skill and, you know, try to win nationals and all that good stuff. So I have I have a laundry list of things I want to accomplish, um, you know, in the short and long term. Yeah. And it's funny you say that because in my mind, you've already accomplished so much and it's, oh, it's no. just great to watch. And I, I honestly cannot wait to see what you do next. I got a long way to go, but thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so I think you have a kind of interesting perspective because you're, you've touched a lot of different parts in the aviation, you know, the maintenance and commercial side, um, you know, flight instructing the airbag world, and then also just being your own student pilot and starting off, you know, without any of this experience, is there anything that you can kind of collectively say about, you know, all those different parts of aviation? Uh, you know, the maintenance world is great. Uh, it's taught me a lot. I've learned, you know, a lot about commercial aviation. because That's basically where my career started after uh, I got my AMP and I've, I'm still in it, been there ever since. Um, so that community is cool. Uh, watching the commercial industry change and, you know, come up with new different ways to market and, you know, new products, new airplanes. It's like really cool to watch the evolution um, of commercial aviation. So that's cool. I've had a front seat. Um, um, as far as the general aviation world, um, it's been great so far. Um, you know, you got, you know, you show up to an airport and, you know, you know, everybody's kind of got their own thing going on. And, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. You know, people walk up to each other. Oh yeah, man, that's a cool airplane. Oh yeah. You want to look at mine? And, you know, it's yeah. kind of <laughs> going back and forth, you know um, it's uh, you know, it's like, who's got the bigger engine kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, but it's, you know, it's cool. I, I think the community is very helpful. I've made tons of friends um, 
who have different types of airplanes, who are willing to do different things, who are willing to, you know, oh, you know, I've met some that live on airports. I didn't even know that, that was a thing. I didn't even know air parks were a thing. Um, you know, like, what do you mean you live on an airport? Yeah, you can drop in any time. You know, I just walk out of my front yard and, you know, I'll come meet you. Like, huh? Like, you know, I didn't understand <laughs> that until I started flying. Um, so now here I am looking for a community, uh, of, you know, to, to live myself currently. So, um, I can move my operation to and, you know, live happily ever after. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's been it's been great. Uh, it's it's really been great. And everybody's been extremely helpful so far, especially in the aerobatic community, uh, because that's a different, totally different ball game as it is. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, those guys are so welcoming because it's such a small community. And if they see, you know, you know, somebody young who's enthusiastic, you know, who has a mission or a goal, they're like willing to like almost drop anything or everything to help you out to, you know, kind of guide you the right way. So it's been really dope. Yeah. That's something I've definitely heard about the aerobatic community. Um, and my dad was a part owner of decathlon a long time ago. And so oh, I did really? some intro. Yeah. I did some oh, intro cool. and some spins and stuff uh, before I got my private. Yeah. And yeah, if that, if that plane was still around, you never know, we might be linking up one day. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, that's that's an experience that once you do it, you're either like, nope, never again. Or yes, let's let's yep. keep going. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's keep, keep going. going. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yep. I got the bug. I got the yeah. bug. Before. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I feel like you get the aviation bug and then you get the airbag bug. Like they're two yeah. separate things. It's a progression. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Separate. And honestly, how I got the aerobatic bug, you know, real quick, I was uh, at the airport and um, uh, my flight instructor was out there. This is after I got my private and he's pulling his RV8 out. And he's like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. He's like, oh, you want to jump in the back? I'm just going to buzz, you know, buzz the area. I'm like, yeah, sure. So um, I didn't know that this was going to happen. So he's like, uh, you know, have you ever done an aileron roll before? I'm like, no. He's like, well, let me show you. So, you know, he pitched the nose up and just throws it over. I'm like, wow. And, you know, <laughs> and I, I still have the video on my phone, you know, the moment that that happened. And um, and uh, <laughs> so. He's like, oh, you want to try it? I'm like, yeah, sure. So he told me what to do. Pitch nose up. Just go for it. You know, go full left. And that's what I did. And I was like, wow, I want to do more, you know, and that was it. And then it was almost like everything started clicking, you know, on Instagram. I found a, you know, a guy who became a friend of mine, uh, Anthony Oshinuga, who's, you know, African-American aerobatic pilot out west in San Diego. So I became a fan of his and I was, you know, picking his brain on how to do certain things. And then at home watching ESPN on TV, I see crazy small airplanes flying in between pylons. And, mm -hmm. you know, then I stumbled upon Mike Goulian, like, who's this guy? You know, okay. He's an American and he flies a cool airplane. He's got a little bit of swag and greased hair and stuff. <laughs> like that. Cool guy, you know, ended up, you know, and Mike and I are fantastic friends now. So, uh, you know, he's mentoring me. I hit him up all the time. He gives me tips and it's just like, it's just so crazy. Like to see where this aerobatic journey started to where I'm at, you know, and who's like guiding me along this way. It's like, I got some really, 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 really good people, you know, in my mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to, you know, do it the right way and make them proud. So. Yeah. And that's something like just sitting here talking with you. Um, it just kind of reiterates the fact that mentorship and aviation is so huge. Um, you know, if it wasn't for that, Mr. Buck, that Delta pilot, or, you know, people along the way, um, and GA and, and aerobatics, like we're all, we're all here to help each other out. And it's just great, a good sense to know that we're involved in a community that is actually willing to do that. And will go out of their way to do that. Correct. Yep. You ain't lying. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and so I know you, uh, you know, you have a big following on Instagram. We kind of chatted earlier about how you like to inspire people to get into flying, you know, keep it fun, keep it fresh and just, you know, enjoy this incredible thing that we all have in common, but what are some of your bigger goals uh, that you like to achieve with your channel? Um, I'd like to really, so, you know, I think um, I'm doing what I originally started or wanting to do uh, in the, uh, you know, in the social media world, uh, which was, you know, bringing just a different perspective uh, to flying um, because, you know, in, you know, in my community, like the African-American community, like, you just don't see it. You know I mean? It's, it's, it's not spoken about. It's not talked about. It's not a thing. It's not a, I want to do this one day, you know, so I was lucky. I was one of the lucky ones to really follow through and have a dream and, you know, you know, see it out. Um, so creating this channel, this Instagram channel that I have um, allows people 
you know, especially in that community to see what I'm doing. It's like, oh, wow, you know, this guy looks like a regular guy I might see around or whatever. And he's doing this, you know, maybe I can do it, too. Um, but what I eventually want to do is, you know, maybe down the line have like my own foundation, um, you know, where I can like bring kids and groups to air shows and say, hey, you know, look at this, you know, maybe partner with a company or something like that and say, hey, you know, I have like a group of 20 kids that are like really pumped about going to their first air show and bring them out, give them that experience and stuff. And, you know, that's something that'll last. I mean, you got F-35 going by with full afterburner, you got the, you know, the Thunderbirds or the Blues coming by doing their thing, you know, and then you got the the regular guy, maybe like me, mm-hmm. you know, out there buzzing around, popping a little smoke in the decathlon, you know, so um, I think that'll really, uh, you know, change because change the perspective, because it's all about exposure. If you're not exposed to it, you don't even know it's out there. Awesome. Well, Mel, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. And seriously, if you don't, don't follow him, Mel the Traveler on Instagram, hilarious content, amazing content like that. Um, and honestly, just a good inspiration whenever you feel like you need to fall back in love with aviation. Awesome. Well, thank you. I, you know, I appreciate the, uh, the invite. It was uh, fun chopping it up, um, you know, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. And everyone, thanks so much for tuning into this episode between two wings. Uh-huh.